The monastery was a key part of Saxon life. Monks led a life of serenity, of reflection and prayer. A bit of singing and a lot of bowing. Compared with the drudgery of outdoor life, this looks pretty cushy. Hang on, that is just the telly. It may have looked like that in medieval times, or at least in our rather romantic vision of medieval times, with lots of cloisters and plain song and people praying and meditating very quietly. But in Saxon times, it was much harder. It was a really tough job. To start with, the monks would have lived in huts just like these, and they too would have had to build them themselves. They had to make their own bread, and they also had to do their own ploughing. In fact, the worst part of being a monk was that they had to do everything that everyone else had to do, and they had the day job. Well, this is a far cry from the medieval cloister, isn't it? Indeed it is, is yes. Is this it? This is exactly it, a Dark Age monk's cell. <laughs> what you see is what you get. They no furniture? Had... No furniture. Bit of blanket, perhaps, for a bed, on top of straw. Few eating irons, you know, um, drinking vessel, plate, knife to, uh, to cut your bread. And that was it. And a uh, very, very strict prayer regime and all the other work they had to do as well. How many times did they have to pray? About eight times in 24-hour periods. And this isn't just hands together, eyes closed. This is oh, down no. the church? Down to the church, yes. And they were, they were stipulated exactly at, uh, at the regular hours throughout the day. What times? Uh, starting just after midnight. Um, uh, bear in mind, of course, they didn't go to bed quite as late as we did. <laughs> Just after midnight, then about 3.30 in the morning, then later at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock in the morning was called the first hour, first hour of daylight, when they'd be have their prayers and then they'd go off to work. And then straight after that, you'd have um, 9 o'clock time, then midday, and then um, about 5.30 in the afternoon. And then later, the, the late prayers before they went to bed. Went to bed about eight o'clock, you say. What happened if you just gave it a miss and slept in? Oh, that was just a definite no-no. Punishments were quite strict, quite severe. Anything, even being late uh, for a service would have, uh, would have, would have meant uh, severe punishments. What do you mean by punishments? There, there were various type of punishments. For the lesser faults, that there, you would almost certainly have to prostrate yourself in front of the brethren. This was called making the vania. Uh, what do you mean by prostrate yourself? Uh, well, I mean, would you like to demonstrate? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, there's some straw down there. Yeah, yeah. What you do is you lie yourself down with your arms outstretched. Like, like that. On your, no, on, on your front. On your top. That's right, like that. Arms outstretched. Yeah. And that's where you would be. Yeah. And uh, the abbot and all the others would be around you. And you would stay there until such time as the abbot thought that uh, you could, you've had enough. Roughly how well, long? It could be, you know, as long as that particular gathering was, uh, was in session. So you could be talking uh, up to hours, perhaps. I don't think my sin was particularly grave. No. <laughs> what other punishments were there? Um, for the gravest of offences, you could, of course, be thrown out of the monastery. Or, or, you know, I mean, in, in, Doesn't sound too you know. bad a punishment to me. <laughs> well, it might have been a really good thing if you were that sort of person. You just didn't really want to do it anyway. But if you were that sort of person, how would you fare in Saxon life? You know, you wouldn't really have to get, get on anyway, would you, really? This is St Cuthbert. Famous monks like him weren't in trouble that often, but their lives were still very hard, and some of it was accepted as a big part of the job. One of the worst parts of the job of being a monk has got to be atonement. This was the process whereby you suffered as a monk in order to try and prevent other people in your community from going to hell. There were lots of different forms of suffering, but one of the things that Cuthbert did was that he used to wade out into the sea, sometimes in the middle of winter and uh, in the freezing cold, and uh, oh, he'd pray for up to seven or eight hours at a time. He did it in secret, but people saw him and he became uh, very famous for it. I don't know if it actually stopped anybody going to hell or not, but what we do know is that within 300 years, the entire country was Christian. I'll tell you what, that was really cold. The worst job of being a monk, though, was the writing. 
Great writers like the Venerable Bede give us a lot of our history of the period. But most monks didn't really write as much as just copy texts, which was far more boring. The danger of making mistakes was always there. Remember all those punishments? And they worked in cold conditions. Because they didn't have much light, they usually worked by open doors or windows. Remember, they didn't have glass, so they were always cold. One Benedictine monk wrote, writing tires the eyes, wearies the back, and sends cramps through the arms and legs. But the worst part, that was the danger. Because of the valuable books, monasteries were a prime target for raiders.